I walked out of the gym yesterday feeling like a freaking ballerina. Now, I don't really know anything about ballet or ballerinas or how they feel, but I can only imagine they are really flexible and they've got really good control of their limbs. They can hold their legs up every which way. Splits are like not even a, a thing for them. It's like a walk in the park. Um, I felt really good yesterday. Um, I walked out feeling like somebody injected me with this lubricant through my hips. I felt effortlessly walking, squatting down into the car, out of the car, walking around. And it was all because of the freaking sumos that I did yesterday. I messed around with them yesterday. I spoke about them yesterday. This morning I woke up and I'm like, wow, my hips feel amazing. Like they just feel open and, you know, walking just the gait is just effortless. My, my hip flexors are kind of longer, I feel. My adductors are longer. Everything feels good. And so this morning when I woke up, I just kept thinking about those effects and I kept thinking about my weaknesses in that position. I am very awkward. I don't have any stability. I don't have any control in that wide stance, whether you want to call it a squat or a deadlift or whatever. I've spent the majority of my time with the narrow stance business. You know, my squats and deadlifts are basically the same, very narrow. And so put me outside in, in, a, in a wide stance, it's completely different. My abductors are weak. My adductors, like the inside, uh, are probably too strong because of the ATG squats and not enough length. And so they pull on my pelvis probably and contribute to the anterior pelvic tilt. And then my hip flexors are always locked in. And so I was thinking about all those things and how I felt from yesterday. And I just started, you know, looking up stuff. And then I recall a lot of you guys telling me the first time around, I was kind of messing around with sumos. A lot of you guys were saying horse stands, horse stands, do the horse stands. And so there I was. I, I basically, I did, what did I do? 10 sets of 30 second holds in their horse stands. Now, my horse stance is not good. You know, I've got a lot of internal hip rotation. I can't get my knees out, but I was trying. So I would get down into a horse stance and hold it for 30 seconds. And then by then, some of those sets, I started cramping up in, I don't even know what region that is. Is it an adductor? Is it a hamstring? Is it a, I don't know what muscle, man. Like it was just locking up right kind of where the sitting bone is. Clearly, I don't have that range of motion. Clearly, it's tight. Clearly, it's, it's, it's weak at that end range. And, but I, the more I did it, the more I kind of started getting those, those feelings back from, from yesterday, from doing the sumos. So that was kind of the flavor of the day. As soon as I rocked up to the gym, I decided to go over to the, the, the kettlebell section and I started loading that horse stance. I don't know if you call that a, a sumo, like kettlebell sumo deadlift or a squat or what the hell is going on there. It's just basically a kettlebell horse stance. I want to say it's a, it's, a, it's a deadlift. I don't know what the difference between a sumo deadlift and a squat is. Really, like the whole thing is about being vertical and shoving your knees out. Maybe a deadlift has a bit more lean, probably a bit more lean. So maybe it's a squat. I was just trying to keep two things in mind. Shove the knees out and keep my torso as vertical. And what that was producing is a whole lot of glute contraction and a whole lot of weird contractions like, is it a... Um, piriformis cramping like I, what other muscles are involved in external rotation of the hip piriformis what are some of the other ones uh, i'm sure there's a few other ones other than the big guy the, you know glute max and min and min mid uh, min and max but he was feeling good uh basically by the time i got to the squat i started feeling like i had no power and so my squats didn't feel all that good because of all the stuff that i did before uh but when I, my squats feel crap, I know my deadlifts are going to feel all right. And so I started deadlifting. And once again, I feel good in my hips. And when, when I feel good in my hips, I feel like I can pull a lot. Uh, and so today, that's kind of how I felt. I worked up to 250. And as I was working through the weights today, I kept thinking about the 260 and how long it's been without pulling 260. And I'm running all these scenarios in my head, thinking about my weakness in the wide stance, thinking about what could have gone wrong to derail me so heavily from not touching 260 such a long time now. It's probably been like three months now, I want to say, man, uh, if not longer. <laughs> it's been a while. So I've regressed uh, in my strength and I'm just trying to think about it. And then I started thinking about technique and I was like, okay, usually when I get to 220, 240, I start to kind of like really try to accelerate from the ground. 
because I'm kind of aware that I'm quite crap off the ground. And then I started thinking to myself, okay, let's do the 220 with like slow. Let's just start and just ease the power in. Be patient with the pull. Emphasize positioning from the first second. Don't jerk at the bar and then get out of position and get your shoulders out of position. That's what I did. And yes, the lifts were slow because I didn't have as much power from the bottom, but I felt strong. And so today I did 220, I did 240, then I did 250. They looked slow as hell, but I was happy with my positioning. I felt strong and stable and locked in. My lats were locked in. So that, maybe that's something for me to work on and, and, and just be patient and be prepared to fight the long fight. You know, Don't just try and rush the deadlift to, so it's over nice and quick. You can get on with your day. And it's, you, know, you haven't been in discomfort for too long. I think the deadlift, you just have to be patient because if you rush it, and I, I, there's, you know, I don't want to say that everyone has to do what I'm doing, but uh, there's a lot of explosive lifters out there that seem like they freaking jump with the bar. But for me, I, I, it's almost like if I rush the beginning, then it's all screwed. I was, I was trying to be really, really slow. Um, so basically, those are the emphasis uh, 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 points for today. Wide stands and being slow with the deadlift. And for some reason, being slow with the deadlift ended up making me stronger because of that positioning. Uh, the wide stance and my deadlift mixed today well. The wide stance and the squat didn't mix all that well. I feel as though, and you know, Louis Simmons keeps ringing in my head every time I think about this. He said, if you are good at wide stance squats, you will also be good at narrow stance squats. They carry you over. If you get good at narrow stance squats, you're not going to be good at wide stance. So automatically, you can conclude the superior squat is the wide because you will have carryover to both. Whereas if you just do the narrow, you just get kind of locked in the narrow and your hips never get worked in that kind of plane. I don't know whether that's true, but it rings true in my uh, experience in the fact that I basically can't squat at all wide stance. Now, I'm not talking about wide stance where you're freaking doing a West Side barbell in full gear, belt, you know, wraps and all that. That to me is not even a squat that I even want to imagine myself doing. It's more of like a wider stance squat where you have like complete external rotation of the, of the hips and you're actually reaching some sort of good depth. Obviously, the wider your stance is with your feet, the less, let's say, anatomically it is possible for you to hit depth or, or, or the, the ATG kind of depth. But it challenges me so much to do, like, what was that? A, a, a 24 kilo kettlebell? It was kicking my ass. My knees just want to cave in. And I'm fighting with all my might to keep the knees out. I don't get that when the narrow stand squat. In a narrow stand squat, my knees want to fall out by themselves because the, 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 the stance is so narrow. So I'm, not complete, I'm completely removing that fight for the knees kind of buckling in. And I don't have that because my stance is so narrow. So I think there's something for me to kind of work there. And as I was doing the horse stand squats, as I was doing the, the kettlebell sumo squats, uh, my quads were lighting up. So that external rotation, those abductors, those external ro rotators, and quads seem to be getting lit up. It's a good feeling. It makes you feel good when you go over to the deadlift. All of those muscles are required for you to be explosive off the floor. That's how it felt. I need my quads to fire, and I need my external rotators to fire as well. That's what the deadlift is. It's hip extension, and a lot of the hip extensors are also external rotators. So it's just something interesting that I kind of... Um, I guess, fluked trying yesterday and that thought, that feeling spilt over to today's kind of thinking. Um, it's interesting. It's an interesting, very cheap horse stance and these kettlebell, very, very cheap, are so freaking challenging. All of these things are happening because I can't do my high rep squats, basically. Uh, that's that's the bottom line. If I, you know, I'm producing a bit of sputum and whatever, I'm, I'm still not right, you know, to push the, 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 the high reps, but eventually I'll do that. But I think uh, there's something to be said about the wide stand stuff. Um, it's really, really interesting. Been uh, watching a, a few videos by 
Dan Green, Dave Tate, all these guys who are doing like kind of sumo type thing, the deadlift. And I'm trying to kind of learn from them. One of you guys actually sent me a link to, uh, was it Calgary? Um, Barbell Club, something like that. Uh, YouTube channel. I've watched that fellow. He's top, top knowledge, top lifter. Um, really, really uh, educational. Um, like the way he, he delivers this information. So I learned a bunch of stuff there. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't have the most fun doing sumo. Uh, it's not aesthetic to me. It's not what the Olympic weightlifting lifting guys do. It's, it's none of that. Like That's not something that drives me. But like I said to, to a few fellas in the gym today, if I can find some sort of connection, you know, to my squat, to my main passion with these other exercises, then I'll do them. You know what I mean? I don't like doing stuff just arbitrarily, just for the sake of variation because I'm bored. No, man, like I just want to get good at the squat. Uh, that's by far the most important thing for me. And when I hear some of these greats talk about you know, Ed Coleman, he said, you know, do your do your sumos, your conventional will improve. And he also says the other way around as well. It's true. And so that rings a bell to me, right? Like my sumo is weak. That's a weakness. Uh, I reckon if I got that to 265, I reckon my conventional might be 280. Or who knows, right? But it's a weakness. Hammer the nail that's sticking out. One other thing that, that I found was really interesting yesterday, uh, actually this morning when I woke up and as I was kind of warming up today, uh, my lower back had a pump. Those sumo deadlifts from yesterday, I don't know what the difference is between wide and, and narrow stance deadlifting, but my back got exposed with the wide stance. I don't know why. Maybe maybe the adductors are on stretch there and they can't contribute. They can't stabilize as well. Um, and, or maybe there's more of an anterior pelvic tilt component to it and my erectors have to fight that a bit more. Or oh, I, I don't really know what's going on, but usually I never get lower back pumps when I'm pulling, you know, conventional. Like it hasn't happened, like I was telling the fellow today at the gym, uh, it hasn't happened for such a long time. This session, I had a lower back pump, which was interesting. It kind of felt good and kind of made me start feeling, thinking about the, the 45 degree hypers. I'm like, man, I I kind of miss the pump in the lower back. Like it's, it's really weird. It makes you feel strong, man. It makes you feel... I mean, when I lift, the only ever thing I ever think about is keep your lower back flat, keep your lower back flat. And when you have a pump, it's like you've got a map. <laughs> your know, lower back is on the map. It makes it so, so easy to kind of have that proprioception with that body part, with that section of your body. It's a really, really good feeling. Uh, I don't get that with, uh, I don't know, just even RDLs and good mornings, I never used to have that pump like I got with the sumos, which was interesting. Another interesting thing. Obviously, my sumo positioning is way off, and that's probably why I'm feeling the lower back, because really, if you do sumo properly, <laughs> you shouldn't be, you should be removing the back out of the equation rather than taxing the, 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 the lower back. I mean, you're supposed to be more upright than a conventional, right? But I just found it interesting that the width of the, of the, of the feet did something for me. Uh, so as it stands, it hits the lower back, it hits the, 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 the external rotators really, really well and hits the quads. I mean, who can complain, you know, about working all, all of these? Uh, it's interesting. It, it, it's interesting and it keeps firing those same kind of memories from people that, I, that, I've, that I've heard, you know, talk about, you know, find a weakness and hammer it, man. You go back to your strength, your strength is going to be stronger. How interesting is that? Appreciate you guys. I mean, the horse stance was completely your idea. Uh, many of you guys said horse stance, horse stance. So finally, I tried it. It's a kick ass exercise. You can do it anywhere, right? You can grease the groove with it, right? That that I like that component. You don't need any equipment. You can get into a horse stance any point. It's kind of like a martial artsy type thing. So I appreciate you guys for that. Appreciate the comments, you know, YouTube comments, Instagram uh, comments and DMs, and uh, obviously the Patreon guys. You know, lots of ideas exchanged there. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.